Did you ever notice that if you take the sum along any row in Pascal's triangle, you'll get a power of 2? In this video, we'll prove to you why that's the case. Here I've drawn the first five rows of Pascal's triangle. So the first row, which we can think of as row zero, has a sum of only one element, so it's just one. If I look at the next row, the sum of those elements is two. And if I look at the next one, I see that the sum is four, and then I get eight on the next row, and then I get 16 on the next row. That's kind of an interesting property because we can see that one is equal to two to the power of zero, and this is the zeroth row and then two is two to the power of one, four is two to the power of two, and eight is two to the power of three, etc. So in general, it looks like the row sum of row n in Pascal's triangle should come out to be two to the n. That's a very interesting property. And in this video, what we're going to do is prove that this is the case. Let me start by rewriting Pascal's triangle in terms of the binomial coefficients. So the first entry is zero choose zero, then on row one, I have one choose zero, one choose one, then two choose zero, two choose one, two choose two, and the next row is three choose zero, three choose one, three choose two, and three choose three, and it keeps going like this. Recall that this notation, n choose k, can also be written as n c k. If you don't remember what n c k is, n choose k, then I do have another video on my other channel which explains exactly what this is counting. But in a nutshell, it's equal to the number of ways to select k objects from a collection of n distinct objects. And that's equivalent to the number of k subsets of an n set. And the fact that we want to prove is that n choose 0 plus n choose 1, and keep going until you get to n choose n, is equal to 2 to the power of n for any integer n bigger than or equal to zero. Notice that the sum on the left-hand side is coming from the nth row of Pascal's triangle. It's equal to the sum of the entries in row n of Pascal's triangle. The technique we're going to use to prove this fact is a common combinatorial technique. What we're going to do is we're going to show that the left-hand side is counting the same thing that the right-hand side is counting. So before going through the full proof, I want to start with a little example. If we take a look at n equal 3, the left-hand side is now going to be 3 choose 0 plus 3 choose 1 plus 3 choose 2 and finally 3 choose 3. And this is equal to 1 plus 3 plus 3 plus 1, which we know is 8, and that's the same thing as 2 to the power of 3, which is our right-hand side. So it works for this small example. But if you think about what 3 choose 0 actually means, it's the number of 0 subsets of a set of size 3, and similarly for all the others. They're the number of 1 subsets, 2 subsets, and 3 subsets. So this is the idea. We want to think of the subsets of an n set, in this case a 3 set. 1, 2, and 3, because n equals 3. So we start writing down the subsets. The first subset is the empty subset, which also can be written as this kind of notation, which is like a zero with a slash through it. Now if we think about subsets of size one, we could have one in our subset, or just the element two, or just the element three. And that's all the options we have for size one. For size two, we could have one with two, or one with three, or two with three. And for size three, we have to take the whole set, one, two, and three. So notice that there is indeed one subset of size 0, and then there's 3 of size 1, and then 3 of size 2, and 1 of size 3. And I've written them like this because what I want to do is to think about a correspondence between these subsets and something which will be clear that there are 2 to the power of 3 of them. Now it may not be immediately obvious how you should think of this subset and this subset in terms of something new which we're going to count in terms of 2 to the power of 3. But once you've seen this technique performed once, this is a kind of technique which can be generalized in a lot of different situations. So what we're going to do is think about each subset as represented by a sequence of three numbers. Each number is going to be a 0 or a 1. And what we're going to do is we're going to put a 0 if we don't want to include a particular element. So because there are none of the elements in this subset, we write 0, 0, and 0. 
Here we only want the element one, so we put a one in the first position to represent including one, and zero here and here to represent don't take two and three. The subset two can be represented as a sequence zero, one, zero, representing that we want the element two and not the others. Similarly, we get the following. Take a moment to make sure that you are happy with the correspondence between these 0, 1 sequences of length 3 and these subsets of the end set, in this case the set 1, 2, 3. Now if we wanted to count the total possible number of 0, 1 sequences of length 3, we can think about it in terms of the positions. There are three positions involved and each position can be either a 0 or a 1. So there's two choices for this position, and the choice that I make here doesn't have any uh, impact on what I can make in the second position. So again, the second position could be either a 0 or a 1, which gives me two choices, and again, two choices. So that clearly means that there are 2 to the power of 3 different ways of making one of these sequences. So this correspondence is exactly the idea of the general proof. All we have to do is write it down in terms of a general n instead of n equals 3. Let's just start by writing down the statement that we want to prove again. And now we'll start the proof. Let s be the set 1, 2, up to n. All those n elements. Now if we think about the number of subsets of s, that's equal to the number of 0 subsets of s plus the number of 1 subsets of s plus, and we keep going until we get to the number of n subsets of s. And we know that that's equal to n choose 0 plus n choose 1, and we keep going until we get to n choose n. And that's equal to the left-hand side. So what we've just shown is that the left-hand side of this equation is equal to, or is counting, the total number of subsets of s. Next what we need to do is show that 2 to the n, this right-hand side, is also counting the number of subsets of s. To do this, we'll make the following claim. There is a one-to-one -one correspondence between subsets of s and 0, 1 sequences of length n. In order to prove our claim, what we need to do is show how to go between a subset of s to a 0, 1 sequence of length n, and how to go from a 0, 1 sequence of length n to a unique subset of s. So we'll do that next. Given a subset of s, say it has elements a1, a2, some generic elements up to ak, then we construct a 0, 1 sequence of length n by putting a 1 in positions a1, a2, up to ak, and a 0 everywhere else. Given a 0, 1 sequence of length n, we construct a subset of s by including element j in the subset if and only if position j has a 1 in the sequence. So these two pieces tell you how to go between a 0, 1 sequence of length n and a subset of s. Perhaps you were already convinced of that before just from our example. So what we've learned is that the number of subsets of s is equal to the number of 0, 1 sequences of length n. And that is equal to 2 times 2, and keep going, times 2, since each position is either a 0 or a 1. And we've multiplied 2 here n times, so we get 2 to the power of n, which equals the right-hand side. So the key point is that we've now shown that the right-hand side also calculates the number of subsets of s. So we know that the right-hand side and the left-hand side are both counting the same number, and that's how we know that the right-hand side is equal to the left-hand side. And that completes our proof. If you've enjoyed this video, don't forget to like it and subscribe. See you next time.